In this video, guys, let's talk about trading a fake bounce off support. Interesting strategy, this one. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. All right, so not one to use in a bull market. You don't want to be kind of trading short in a bull market, but you could flip this on its head for resistance. So basically, we've got two kind of broad strategies when you've got support level. Know what support level is, guys. We draw it at a level that we expect price to bounce off. Okay. So imagine this scenario here and imagine price is kind of touching the support level. The two scenarios are normally, hey, I'm gonna trade a break through the support. On the other one is I'm going to trade a bounce off the support. And you know, they're kind of classical strategies and if you time them right, great trades. It's knowing when to do one or the other that's the kind of sweet spot for traders, um, but that's kind of the, the, the skill set you nurture as a trader. But one of the things is trading the fake bounce off support. So first of all, we're trying to quantify uh, and, and then we'll qualify a fake bounce off support. So a fake bounce off, you might go, well, isn't a bounce off support a bounce off support? Well, yes, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to look to see if it could be a fake bounce. So we're going to look at things like the strength of the move off the support level. You know, do we have a lot of volume coming in with that? Do we have persistency of candles, like solid green candles? Does it take a long time? Do we get a wick up? You know, using your skills to judge the price action and the, the, the way that the trade develops. And this is kind of a sweet spot for many traders, guys. It's, you know, appreciating how price does something and saying, hey, I've seen this, I've seen this movie before. You know, I've seen this play out before. This doesn't look strong to me. And preempting that and doing something that the textbooks would never tell you to do. And that is, let's use the purple here, taking a short at this point here. Most people say, right, you know what, you're going to take a long on a break of here, or you're only going to short when it goes below here, or you're going to buy on a break of there. This is flipping on its head. This is taking the textbook and ripping it up and saying, yeah, but under certain circumstances, I want to be selling that pop off there because I'm going to preempt the fact that we're going to smash through this low and I want to onboard it ready. I don't want to be chasing it like a retail trader right into these lows. Now, Let's just kind of go back and rewind for a second. The conditions have got to be right for this. You've got to be in a downtrend, weak market, weak stock, weak currency pair, whatever it is. You don't want to be trading this in an uptrend because the likelihood is support holds in an uptrend. So pick a good weak downtrending market. Then you get that second bounce off and then you're judging the strength of the move. Like I say, looking at the volume, looking at how long it takes to get up there and, and using your reversal candlestick type patterns. So do you see you know, a big wick to the upside? Do you see you know, a big kind of solid red after that, like in this point here? Something that indicates a reversal. So that uses your filter, now you've got to find a trigger and taking that, it could even be a little double top. You could kind of have this little double top here. The broader theme is that you think we're gonna go lower. You're trying to find a good entry for it. You don't wanna hit it right at the, at the support level because where do you put your, your stop with that? You put it in a crap position. It's right up here. Um, so you, know, you, you kind of find a sweet spot in trying to preempt the break. So you look for the reversal after. Get the support, the bounce off the support, then you look for the reversal on the very short time frames, whatever pattern there is. In golfing, you won't get in the golfing on a kind of lower time frame, but you know, some kind of big, huge bar, some kind of a wick to the upside, some kind of double top, this type of thing. Then you trade off that, you take your short trade off that, you assume that it's gonna be fake, you take your short trade at that point, your stop very obviously goes above the high because it's not gonna be fake if it carries on, and you look to push it to lows. Now, the advantage of this, of course, is that you can take it off where other people would normally be getting in. So you can take some of the trade off here on the last high in case it covers there if you feel like taking a bit of risk off. You know, you know, don't go overboard and start peeling all the trade off. The whole point of trade is that you've got a nice cushion ready for the capitulation through the low. But you could take some off there, you could take some off the prior support. But the main idea is it's a fake bounce off support and the thesis is that it's gonna then rip through and the cascade of sellers, although stops getting triggered, is gonna help you get out of the market and then you're kind of scaling out into that low, maybe keeping a chunk of the trade for some future moves. So, that's trading a face, fake bounce off support. Quick summary, guys. You've got your support, you've got your downtrend, you've got your weak market, fine. You've got your support level, it bounces off, but it starts to struggle. At that point, you just have to almost go, right, 
I'm going to step in front of this. It, maybe it feels like you're stepping in front of the train, which is why we wait for some kind of reversal pattern after the bounce. Take the trade, put your stop in. You've got to make sure you're not being caught on the reversal. Uh, if the conditions are right, it retests. People are buying, people are buying. You're basically preempting the people. You're taking the other side of the trade of the people who think this is a reversal. They're buying, you're taking the other side of them. The people who are buying on this pullback here, you're taking the other side of them. And the people who are buying on support, you're taking the other side of them. And you're relying on those three then getting stopped out, causing that cascade lower. It's not a trade for all conditions by any stretch of the imagination, but it's something to maybe consider and sometimes think outside the box a bit and say, you know what, that's a little bit different. You know, most people wouldn't be doing that. And how many times have you seen that in the market? Maybe quite a few. The fact that it looks like it's going and then doesn't and rolls back down. So how can you leverage on that? What sort of conditions are you know most likely for this to happen? What are the reversal patterns looking like? And thinking a little bit more like the chess game rather than just individual price, individual price, individual individual price all the time. Say that four times very, very quickly. Anyway, guys, if you like this kind of stuff, thumbs up is appreciated. Take care. Bye-bye.